Sunday, March 10th, 454. And uh, I wanted to go over this email that you and I had going back and forth. And let me just get right into it. It says, I can see it. I haven't seen all your videos. I believe the Holy Spirit led me to what I should have known from you before knowing anything about you. So I can do what I am called to do, even the work of a devil. With me, nothing is private, but I know I could have asked you beforehand. But as you keep doing, as you have done by custom of personality, and not only by obeying the truth always, I also have continued to do the way and am judged also according to my ways. Everything is personal with God, and every shout in public is for edification from house to house and village to village. The law of God says, the law of Moses says, if you have an issue with a brother, take it first in private, so as you did. But I take it on me to not obey and do according to what I heard of the Father in heaven. How should I boast more without the performance so-called I talked to you about already? A tension, a fight, a friendly brawl in the street cannot be ignored. You are a door to be seen. Peter is holding the keys of the kingdom for you to bind and to unbind. You are one of the better, and I could not have agreed with you at all. If we have no fault, we cannot be loved of God, for his pleasure is to reconcile us to him through the gospel and without fault. There is no separation, and without separation there is no reconciliation. You said you have fault. I had not directly called you names. I may or may not directly call out fault, but whatever the righteous judge does, he does for himself, beholding eternal past and eternal future. He purposely made enemies to himself, to some he abideth wrath, and for some he has compassion and brought them back to the fold. In the end, one fold able to stand when our Lord is no longer amongst us. Luke 22:37. For I say unto you that this is written must yet be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And I wrote back to Jonathan. This is on July 7th, 2020, almost four years ago. Jonathan, I don't care that you didn't ask me beforehand, and I didn't say that I had a problem with you making anything public, did I? As a matter of fact, at the 125 mark on my video to you, I said that I was perfectly fine. It was perfectly fine. My problem wasn't that you made anything public. My problem was that what you said about me to the public was not true. You're telling everybody that I said that because I don't think the KJV is perfect, then any of the Bibles can be used. And that was a false statement. And unless you can somehow prove that's what I said, I would have you to consider it a lie. You told people that you answered me by saying, if I didn't believe in any of the Bible versions, then it's best not to use any of them. Again, that was never said to me in any of our correspondences. Never. Yet that was what you told to the people you said to me. When did you ever say that to me? Show me. Um, the next thing... Therefore, speak I to them in parables. Okay, when you use the, because the subject with Gene Revel is about, he confessed that first he believed in the King James Version only, and now he believes that all the version can be used. Okay, I know, okay, he's, he's tried to convince me that the King James Version is not perfect, and so none of the Bible are perfect. And since none of the Bible are perfect, then you can use all of them. Well, that pretty much exactly mirrors what's going on today, doesn't it? See how you were making a big deal back then about how you said I said that the KJV wasn't perfect? And you're doing the same thing today. So what was the lull in between those two points? Well, I think that... Um, you know, if you, uh, what I answered him regarding that is that if you, <clears throat> if you use all the version and you don't believe none of them, then you just better not use any of them. 
And when did you ever say that I didn't believe in the Bible? When? I told you that I believe that there are truths and errors found within it, and that we need discernment to separate the wheat from the tares within the words of all of the scriptures. I never said that I didn't believe in the Bible. Never. It was you, and you only, that said that I said that, not me. So tell me, Jonathan, why in the world would I tell you that I believed that the KJV was the most concise Bible out there, especially when, according to you, I don't believe any of them? Why would you tell people that I said that any Bible version could be used? Even after I plainly stated in my email that there were many out there, many of them are completely ridiculous and can be seen as having an agenda behind them. Did I say somewhere that it was okay to use these versions of the Bible too? No, no I didn't. But who else besides you and me would ever know that? According to what you stated to everybody else who may watch your video, this perverted version would also be on the list of my okay to use Bibles. Now wouldn't they? Hmm. See, I mean, holy smokes, this sounds just like today, what you're doing to me today. If this is the performance that you feel you needed to demonstrate in order to boast more, then I will have to ask you to prove that I said any of these that you accused me of saying. But until then, they're all unfounded, slanderous allegations towards me. Man, that sounds like today. And that's something that I do not appreciate. If I was making videos telling people that you were saying things that you never said, how would you feel about it? I don't think you'd be very happy about it, would you? Should I be happy about it? So if you feel comfortable declaring falsehoods about me, then that's on you, Jonathan. And if that's why you said you had to shout in public for edification from house to house and from village to village, according to what you said you heard from the Father in heaven, then who am I to stand in your way? But the question still remains. Why did you tell people that I said things that I never said? And can you prove that I ever even said them? If you feel that the areas I addressed weren't falsehoods or a misrepresentation of what I actually said, then prove it. Show me where I said any of those things that you said I said, and I will put out a public retraction telling everybody that I was wrong. I would not have the slightest problem in doing that. And about the name calling, you are correct, you never directly called me any names, however, I'm glad you included the word directly when you said that, because I did not say that you directly called me names. I said that it felt like you were using certain scriptures as a cover in order to call me names. It's a covert or indirect way of getting your message across, yet it was still understood. You started off your message by saying, I believe the Holy Spirit led me to what I should have known from you before knowing anything about you, so I can do what I am called to do, even the works of a devil. But time is short, so if you feel that you're being called to do something concerning me, I'll leave you with this verse which contains its own indirect meaning for you. John 13.27 and after the sop, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. So, then you replied back on the 8th of July, 2020. You are very good at listening. The thing about the performance I keep referring to is about the destruction of Israel, but not utterly, because she is my wife and I must die also. A testament cannot take effect before the death of the testator, I will die in the streets. This is the true reason I asked you to test my spirit, and this is the reason for my lying, even though it is not intentional. The Lord put the words in my mouth. The soap ministry, the sop Satan entered. I still wondered. I will know at the last day, but still have hope Jesus cast out the devil when it's time, the time for you to be reconciled. You will be seen. There is no correction above this you have done unto me. The only true admonishing I've seen for the ten years I've been on YouTube. I need one more day to finish. Was working hard in the night time for the things of the world, and I was trying during the daytime to end the matter about my love for truth. Enough, though, I was found a liar, too. 
My deduction is false deduction, but not because I put words in your mouth that you never said. You believe the Bible, and you are not trusting any versions whole. Would be a better statement. Your discernment is not the same as my discernment. I need my guide, else I would be deceived from the bottom of my heart. The things that are written in my heart is as a bottomless pit, but the words I trust lift me up out of my bed, giving me a better hope for when I am stirred out of the chamber. Now, does that look like I left saying that I'm a King James only person? It sounds like we kind of amicably left, parted our ways and left. You said you were going to stay doing what you were doing, and I'm going to stay doing what I'm going to doing. And you're still going, thank you for testing me. You just got on Mike Giver's butt the other day. You said he was kissing my butt because I put that video of him up on my YouTube uh, channel that one time. But then he's coming back going, will you work with me? Do you want to work together and do this and that? And you say he's kissing my butt. Well, what do you call this? I just got done tested you. I'm not a KJV only person. And you're going, thank you. That's the best testing I've had in over 10 years. And then you just shut up for three more years. Oh, boy. Wait till you see what you actually approved of, hireling. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to poopy your pants, I think. I'm pretty sure. Take back my video, change of plan, and try to put me a shame with it. You're not going to be able to put me ashamed. Everybody will see through. Why would you be advocating those counterfeit Bible? They are in your collection, but you also use them. But I don't recall Gene Revel using them. But I don't recall Gene Revel using them. All the years that Gene Revel made his videos against Jonathan Clegg. Is anybody remembering a video or an instance when Gene Revel was using a counterfeit Bible to go against Jonathan Clegg? And since you have the tools to find back, because every time that you add something to find back, you found back, then show me where in the old videos there was Gene using counterfeit Bible to go against Jonathan Clegg. Okay, what's up, Harlan? Sunday, March 10th. 4.23 in the afternoon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back about a month ago on my Change of Plans channel and I'm going to play something that I played for Hireling. And uh, we'll see what his stance really was on the KJV. And we're going to do it play by play. And then I'm going to show you what a miserable liar he actually is. It may not be in this video, but it's going to get there, believe me, because that's what he is. Let me see here. Here we go. Since all the Bibles aren't perfect, Gene said you could use all of them. Oh, really, Hireling? Because that's not how it went down. But that's the way you tried to, you know, make others perceive it. And that was pretty much our first, I don't know, head-to-head. -head, when I told you that I used to be KJV only when I was lassoed into religion. But after I went and started reading everything on my own, that's when I started to realize things. But anyways, I told you about it. You had a problem about it. I didn't change my ways, but you make it sound like I conform to your ways. Like I went back to King James onlyism, and I never did. And you knew it. And we're gonna play some videos that prove you knew it. But first, this. Um, the next thing. Therefore, speak I to them in parables. Okay, when you use the, because the subject with Gene Revel is about, he confessed that first he believed in the King James Version only, and now he believed that all the version can be used. Okay, I know, okay, he's, he, he's tried to convince me that the King James Version is not perfect, and so none of the Bible are perfect, and since none of the Bible are perfect, then you can use all of them. Well, that pretty much exactly mirrors what's going on today, doesn't it? See how you were making a big deal back then about how you said I said that the KJV wasn't perfect, and you're doing the same thing today. So what was the lull in between those two points? 
take back my video, change of plan, and try to put me ashamed with it. You're not going to be able to put me ashamed. Everybody will see through. Well, I think that, um, you know, if you, uh, what I answered him regarding that is that if you, <clears throat> if you use all the version and you don't believe none of them, then you just better not use any of them. Okay. And I know it's something that I can work around because, I mean, I've lived in numerous countries throughout my life where I was the one with the deficiency in the language when it comes to communicating. You know, and I know firsthand how frustrating it can be when somebody doesn't quite understand what it is that you're trying to get across. But with that being said, I wanted to address the next couple clips that you put out. Now you and I together have about what 16 or so emails back and forth as well as a few comments you know that stem from each other's channels regarding various videos so after I heard your video I went back through all of them so I could see where these statements that you made lined up and right off the bat I found the email I sent where I told you that I used to be a King James only as a matter of fact I was the one who brought it up because the way you said that I confessed that I used to be a King James Version only, it kind of made it sound like I was caught doing something, but I finally confessed. Like I confessed to a crime of some sort. He confessed that first he believed in the King James Version only, and now he believed that all the version can be used. I mean, it might not be the same up in Canada, but down here in the States, you aren't asked to confess to something unless it's in some type of a criminal proceeding. So, I mean, that's the first thing I wanted to clear up. So let me show you how this confession went down. So, let's see. It was the 22nd of June, and I wrote you this email. And it said, Hello, Jonathan. I understand completely that you believe that the KJV and only the KJV is the true Word of God. And as I mentioned previously, I was at one time KJV only as well. Looking back on it, if somebody were to have asked me why, the only answer I could have responded with would have been, I'm not sure why. I guess because that's what I've always been told. Okay, I told you why I used to be KJV only. Could you relate to me as to why, you're, why you feel this way? If the KJV was translated from the older Hebrew and Greek manuscripts, why aren't those writings from where they used to be taken also considered God's Word? Books such as the Torah, the Tanakh, or the Septuagint, for example. And what would you say if the authorized English version of the 1611 KJV had errors within it? Or perhaps even these two books contain contradictions when compared between each other. Now if you notice that I said, as I mentioned previously, that I was KJV only, and that previous mention was in a Word document that I sent you on the 18th of June that went by the title of To Cleave, where I went over some of what I thought to be key issues concerning certain words, but I also introduced to you the fact that I used to be KJV only. Now I'll dig into the document a little deeper on a later video, but for now I just wanted it to be shown out in the open that I was up front about this, and you had known this for at least 15 days prior to you making your 4th of July video. So let me read that specific part of the document, and then I can move on here. And it says, So in closing, Jonathan, I hope I presented my view of this topic in an understandable fashion. And I do know exactly how you feel when you're promoting the KJV as the only true and infallible Word of God. I know this because I used to have the very same stance that you have, and it took me a long time to come around to how I look at things today. I'm not a Bible scholar by any stretch of the imagination, but I have come across enough inconsistencies in all the versions that I read to know that for sure that there's not one of them out there that's perfect. And now for the next little snippet I wanted to address was, we hear you saying that I believe that all the versions can be used. You said that because I believe that none of the Bibles are perfect, then you can use all of them. 
and so none of the Bible are perfect and since none of the Bible are perfect then you can use all of them let me ask you something Jonathan I mean, where did you ever hear or see me say that I don't believe it was any of our correspondences was it I mean you're telling everybody that I said that all the versions can be used you know like there's no discernment involved like it's just some big orgy of Bibles and anything goes so let me show whomever may see this of what I actually did say about the KJV and some of the revisions as well as some of the older texts that I inquired about and if you run across something that I missed or overlooked where I said that you can just use all of them you know I'd be curious to see what I said so let's take another look at that last line from the document that I sent on June 18th there and it says I'm not a Bible scholar by any stretch of the imagination but I have come across enough inconsistencies in all the versions that I read to know for sure that there's not one of them out there that's perfect okay now that lines up perfectly with some of what you said or you stated that I said that there wasn't a perfect Bible out there but it doesn't say anywhere in there that I said since none of them are perfect that you could use them all at least not there so maybe I said it somewhere else nope you never How said about it. my response to you on the 26th of June where I shared my thoughts on the video series you linked that was called ridiculous Bible versions of the new age let's see what did I see there let's read it it says hello Jonathan I watched the videos you sent me plus five more that were in his series of seven titled ridiculous Bible perversions of the new age I've seen some of his videos previously and have respect for his research and opinions he covered a lot of the new revisions that have come out and yes there are many out there that are completely ridiculous and can clearly be seen as having an agenda behind them now did you hear me say that Hireling, did you hear me say that? The first time that I put this video out, did you hear me say that? And if you did, why didn't you put that in your conversation, on your comments? Do you hear me in there saying that there's a lot of them out there that are just nothing but ridiculousness and I don't want to have anything to do with them? Yes, but you didn't say that to anybody. You're just trying to pin me in a corner and not tell the whole truth and that's going to come out a little bit later too and it's going to become really really clear what you're doing now I specifically said yes there are many out there that are completely ridiculous and can be clearly seen as having an agenda behind them now I'm having a little bit of trouble here trying to figure out how somebody could take that statement and then turn around and make it sound like what you said I said that none of them are perfect so you can use them all and so none of the Bible are perfect and since none of the Bible are perfect then you can use all of them see you're arguing a lie you're saying that I said that and you're arguing a lie you need to tell people what I said correctly you can't just guess it stuff like this hireling but that's all you do. Take back my videos, change of plan, and try to put me ashamed with it. You're not going to be able to put me ashamed. Everybody will see true. And it seems like you took a little bit of liberty with what I actually said, and then spun it to sound the way you wanted it to, be, you know, to be heard by others. But let's keep going here. Let me pull up the next time that I mentioned how I felt about the KJV, and that would have been on June 30th response to your email, where you stated, and it's underlined in red there, Now you don't need to ask me any more questions. You did ask questions, and there's no more I can tell you about any questions you have left. Now when you go further down that particular reply, you can see what I had actually said. I said, Jonathan, Believe it or not, but I'm not bringing all this up in order to bash the KJV Bible. I actually believe that it's one of the most concise Bibles that are out there. However, it doesn't make it infallible. 
Did you read any of this to anybody, Hireling? Or did you suppress this as well? I mean, it seems kind of important, doesn't it? It says, Jonathan, believe it or not, but I'm not bringing all this up in order to bash the KJV Bible. That's what Mike Giver says I do. It's all Gene Rebel over there trying to bash the KJV Bible. Both of you are just deaf and blind when it comes to this particular subject, especially with the Daniel 9.25 verse. You, you two are just totally dumb and blind on that one. He says, I actually believe that it's one of the most concise Bibles that are out there. However, it doesn't make it infallible. I never even alluded to that the KJV was some type of a outdated junk Bible. I mean, did you not understand what I said when I wrote that I believe that it was one of the most concise Bibles that are out there? But see, I said I used to be KJV only, but now after everything that I've run across in my studies, I, I now have reservations about saying that the KJV isn't perfect. And because of my opinion about something and it didn't line up with the way somebody else thinks that it should have, I get a response back like this. And after much dedication in searching truth, I say unto you, and you can make a video to testify for or against, the Lord knows, that by your confession of starting with trusting and being also a sole believer in the KJV, you have contained unto yourself the whole lump. You must go to the toilet and see what remains. 2 Timothy 3.7 Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Proverbs 26.11 As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. I kind of get the feeling that you're just using these verses as some type of cover in order to just get away with calling me names and putting me down for telling somebody how I look at certain points of view. But you know what, Jonathan? I mean, there have been numerous times in my videos that I've come up against Jonathan Collect by using other versions of the Bible. I mean, I've used everything from the NIV clear down to include the Targums. Did you not hear this? Did you not hear this video that I put out? I mean, you read every comment, you watch every video, but you're trying to tell everybody now that you didn't read this? Or you didn't hear this? I don't think that's possible. Kind of like in the same pretty please category to me here. Take back my video, change of plan, and try to put me ashamed with it. You're not going to be able to put me ashamed. Everybody will see true. You say it's a lie. It's the truth. You are confirming the counterfeit Bible. And then for your excuse, you say, I should have told you that it was wrong four years ago. Well, when watching your video, I don't remember you using counterfeit Bible to go against Jonathan Clegg, so I did not say a thing. But you know what, Jonathan? I mean, there have been numerous times in my videos that I've come up against Jonathan Clegg by using other versions of the Bible. I mean, I've used everything from the NIV clear down to include the Targums. Shouldn't the foolishness that I displayed during those videos, you know, by going back and using all the dog vomit to combat Clegg? Shouldn't that folly have constituted some type of a backlash towards me? But for some reason, I, I don't seem to remember any rebukes coming my way for doing this. Did you hold back just because, you know, I was assisting you in your battle with Kleck? Yes, yes, that's exactly what he did. Can everybody see it now? I told him that I wasn't KJV only anymore. He had a big pissy fit. Then we went our ways, and I never went back to KJV onlyism. It's already complicated enough like this. Why would you want to make it even more complicated by all the version made by the enemy? That, that's pretty much his story. But then he says, for those next three years, everything was just perfectly great, and we were getting together fine, but I was using different versions of the Bible in there and now in another one of his videos he's saying I've only ever seen Gene use the real Bible none of these impersonation Bibles that he's using now and worshiping 
But again, that's a lie. Or if your battle with Kleck somehow comes to an end, do I then have to look over my shoulder to see if you're going to try to judge something I said? Apparently. Because I not used the KJV to come to a conclusion about something? That's what's happening now. And the last part of this that I'll address is when you said this. What I answered him regarding that is that if you, <clears throat> if you use all the version and you don't believe none of them, then you just better not use any of them, okay? And even though you said you answered me by saying this, this is the very first time that I'm aware of it. I mean, I never seen where you commented this in any of our emails, but, but I can address it in this way. I had already mentioned to you that I believed that Satan's most powerful weapon is his ability to sow confusion among the people by constantly inserting truths right alongside the lies in every aspect of life. I mean, I'm sorry, Jonathan, if you don't like me saying this, but yes, I do believe that includes the KJV Bible. I've said that the Father's true children were born with the spiritual DNA to be able to decipher the truth from the lies. And that's why Jesus spoke in the parables because he knew that the true children would be able to understand his words. I mean, he knew that the enemy wouldn't perceive what he was doing by telling these short stories about everyday things, so he knew that they wouldn't think it would be even necessary to tamper or change them. I mean, if Jesus already knew that his words were all going to be written down in perfection, why did he feel the need to have to code everything? Why didn't he just come right out and tell everybody everything in plain terms as to what we needed to do? Especially if he already knew that all of his words were going to be protected. I mean, he did it this way because if he would have came right out and said clearly what the truth was, the enemy would have understood what he was saying and trying to do and then manipulated his word. Why else would he have said it in a coded message? It just means that he knew that the word could be manipulated. I mean, that's why I'll read anything and everything. Now, does that mean that I'm sucking everything down like it's Kool-Aid and I'm believing everything that I see in here? No. That's what you're making it sound like, Harlan. Like I'm justifying everything. Not like I'm wanting to seek for more knowledge to see if it was you know, viewed differently in a different culture at a particular time, you're not allowing me that expansion of the mind. Just as long as I don't go outside the realms of what you say I'm allowed to go outside of. Huh. No, no it doesn't. That's where the discernment comes in. That's where the Holy Spirit guides you to all the truth. But if you don't digest it, you're never going to know what truths and lies were in it. All these religious texts out there have truths and lies in them. I mean, the Torah, the Koran, the Talmud, the Targums, and yes, even the Holy Bible, and I've already demonstrated it. So not to read any of these writings or utilize them because I believe they aren't perfect, to me, that would just be senseless. I mean, my job is to separate the truths from the lies. And if I don't bother to take everything in that I can and analyze it, how am I ever going to know for sure? So I guess you can say that this was a rebuttal to the video that you put out. But I wasn't going to sit by and not say anything about how you were portraying what we spoke about. Are thought... you saying that you don't remember this video at all? You don't remember this subject matter? This video is from four years ago. Okay, it's possible you could have forgot that. But a month ago? I don't think so, Harling. And yet you're still going to just let people think that I'm just some Scientologist. Yeah, subtle and crafty you are. Take back my video, change of plan, and try to put me ashamed with it. You're not going to be able to put me ashamed. Everybody will see true. So my beliefs are just that. They're mine. And when you said that I was trying to convince you that the KJV wasn't perfect, 
you, you kind of made it sound as if I was trying to win you over to a particular belief system or something. I mean, I can assure you that I wasn't trying to pull you from one side to another. I was trying to show you what the reasons were for me feeling the way that I do about certain subjects. But if I can't show you why I feel the way I do, then what good is communication then? I mean, I've freely admitted on numerous occasions that I don't know everything, nor do I believe that I've ever even thought or acted like I did. However, I just didn't fall off the turnip truck either. So please keep that in mind, Jonathan. And you really didn't keep it in mind, did you? So what do you think? You think you might owe the people an apology for you telling them that you had no idea that I used other versions when I introduced the subject to you and came to you and told you what I did and what I used? You're going to sit there now and say you've never heard that before. That's what you said earlier on a video. You think you would have remembered it? Or is this selective memory, Harling? Choose one. Take back my video, change of plan, and try to put me ashamed with it. You're not going to be able to put me ashamed. Everybody will see through. Okay, Jonathan, here's my deduction. Remember you did that whole spiel on how you didn't say that I said something? No, it was merely your deduction. And you felt something coming from me, uh, putting words in your mouth that you have not said. I call it deduction. Okay? Just the same way you might use deduction when not everything is said. Well, my deduction is that you're being extremely hypocritical to sit there and read my comment like it's some type of absolute gibberish, enough so that you have to thank Jesus that you don't read the Bible like that. Okay, thank you, Jesus. I don't read the Bible like this. Just to turn right around and do the exact same thing, only you type the words into Google search engine to get your results. So let me ask you, Jonathan. Are you getting all the updated modern definitions when you're doing it that way? Are all those Google searches giving you the Greek and Hebrew definitions that those words, you know, they more closely related to from way back some 2,000 years ago when they were actually being used? You know, maybe I'm the one that should be thanking Jesus that I don't read the Bible like you. Okay, thank you, Jesus. I don't read the Bible like this. Now I'm going to finish up part two right here. And whether or not you want to take any of this to heart, I don't know, because that's all up to you. I may just be blowing empty words into the breeze for all I know. But when I go into part three, we're going to discuss and compare your KJV-only stance and the way you have a way of insulting people's intelligence, you know, if they don't happen to be a KJV-only believer as well. Now, maybe a few days before I get to it, but I have other things I need to get done. Don't worry though, Jonathan, I haven't finished up yet with what you've asked me to do. If you want to go with the corruption and with the corrupt Bible, then have pleasure in unrighteousness.